everybody, this is Bill McCown. I'm one of the AEC Solutions Engineers at uh, Synergist Technologies in Quakertown, PA. Uh, so today I'd like to show you how to import a JPEG image and how to scale it and rotate it using the reference option. Uh, this way you can use it as a background and then trace over it and it'll be to the correct scale and rotation of your drawing. Um, so today I'm in AutoCAD 2013. This workflow will work in most AutoCAD versions though, the same workflow. Uh, so the scenario here is you've got a JPEG file which is a scan of a hand-drawn uh, plot plan. It's to some unknown scale to fit on an 8.5 by 11 inch drawing. So what we want to do first is create some layers. Um, it's a good practice to put, to put an image on its own layer or images on their own layer. So I'm just going to create a, an image layer and I'm just going to give it a random color. I'm also going to create a land property line layer so that I can trace over the outside of this and the line type of phantom. Okay, now we set image layer. Okay, so to import an image we've got to go to the insert, attach, you can also type image. Um, this is looking for image files here by default. I'm just going to go over to my project directory here. And this is my site plan. I'm going to open this. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to actually just take uh, specify on screen for the scale. And we're going to put the insertion point at 0, 0, 0, and we're going to leave the rotation at the moment at zero. So the only thing I want to have checked here is so that I can scale it. Okay. Bring that in. It's asking for a scale. Now I know this is eight and a half by eleven, so I'm just going to put in here one hundred, which would make it about eight feet or so. Okay. We have to zoom extents. Alright, so there's our plot plan. Now you'll notice that it has scale here. Okay, but that's only forty feet scale. If you look around, we also have some dimensions, one of them being 718.80 feet, which is probably the longest dimension that we have on this image. So what I want to do is instead of using this small 40 feet, because we're tracing over this, we're tracing a raster image and we can't use our snaps, so I'm going to turn them off right now, and no snap tracking, because we can't use our snaps, we're going to trace over this just using our eye and then scale it and rotate it. So the best thing to do is take the longest dimension that you know of on the drawing and trace over that. Okay, so now that I've brought my image in, I want to change my layer now to L property line. And the first thing I want to do here is actually draw a line and what I want to do is just click on line. I want to zoom in here and as best I can draw this line. Start it here. Come all the way up to the other point and pick that point as best you can. Now, again, I'm not using any O snaps, I'm just tracing over this. Okay, so there, I've got my line in on top of my drawing. Now, if I were to go and list my line, and I can do that under uh, Properties, List, and List that line, you would see that currently, just by eye, I've got 101.1512. Okay, I've got to scale that line and the image to 718.80 feet. All right. Now to do this, first thing I want to do is set up my units. So I want to set up the units so that they're the exact same as my drawing here, the image I've just scanned. And I'm going to take engineering, 
which is decimal feet. And for angles, I'm going to take surveyor's units. I'm going to go down here to double places. Now, if I were le to re-list that line, I can see it's now 8.5, 8 feet and 5 inches and some change. All right, so the first thing we want to do is scale the image and the line at the same time. So I come over here to my Modify, Scale, select with a crossing box, select both the edge of the frame of the image and the line. Okay, you should see two found. Hit enter. Okay, for your base point, you specify the base point here. We want to take, want to turn your O snaps back on and take the end point of that line. Now, at this point, we want to take reference, R for reference, and again, we want to take the bottom point of that line and the top point of that line. Now by doing that AutoCAD just measured what that line is currently is and it's now asking me for a new length for that line and I want that line to be this dimension here so 718.80 feet enter. All right. Now you're actually looking at this image so close you're seeing the actual pixels of the line. If I start to zoom out here, you'll see we're way close in. So what we want to do again is zoom extents. Now, if we go back and list the line again, seven hundred eighteen. It's given us uh, inches here, nine point six zero inches but that is correct as far as 0.80 feet. So that is exactly right now as far as the size. Now all we need to do is rotate this using the same method so that that line is in the right angle. You can see right now this is our current angle here and that's not what we want. Okay, so we want 25 degrees, 33 minutes, 35 seconds east. So, again, we're going to rotate it this time, but we're going to again use the same method. We're going to put a crossing box so that we get the edge of the image and the line. Okay, because if we select the, the middle of the image, we're not going to select anything. It's got to be the edge, the frame. Okay, the base point, we're going to take the end point of that line. We're going to take R for reference. We're going to take the end point of the line again. And the other end point of the line. Now, this time, instead of the uh, distance, it's measuring the angle. All right, now it's asking us for a new angle. And we want to just type in exactly north 25D. 33, it's a foot marker, 35 inch marker, and E, and then enter. Okay, that rotates our image to the correct angle, and we can check that. Again, we're going to do a list. I'm just going to type LI. Select, I can select, if I'm having trouble selecting the image, I can type L for last and hit enter. Okay. Now I've got the same size and I've got the correct angle. So I've got the angle and the size now. Now I can actually proceed to tracing over any of this image. Now you can use your snaps. I would start drawing my lines using my snaps from here down to here using these actual dimensions. Okay, I can't snap to anything here. It's only a raster image so there's no snapping. If it were a PDF I was using here I could snap to it if it was a vector based PDF and I could actually just snap to this this is the way you have to do it if it's a raster based image okay uh, so at this point you could keep drawing all the way around here um, a couple things you might want to 
do is go up to your layers and take your image layer and take the transparency down to maybe 50% so that it's a little easier to draw over. You see how it dulled that back? Okay, now if I were to draw lines over this, it's a little easier to see. Okay. If I go back into the line command, I can use my snaps now and I can enter in 178.67 feet. Tab over and say South 54 D 25 minutes 05 seconds east. Okay, and you can see that's exactly because we keyed it in, that's exactly right, and it's pretty close to being on top of that image. And that is that is pretty close there. So you're just using the image at this point as a reference in the background, and you can do things like um, I'm going to create a new layer here and just uh, an L land layer here, and maybe I want uh, some elevation lines, maybe make them green. And at this point, I can trace over things. Again, I'm going to undo my O snaps here and trace them with a polyline. So I can just kind of pick points every 20 or 30 feet. And if you want to clean that up a little bit, make it a little nicer, you could actually go in and p-edit that and maybe just spline that curve just to smooth it out a little bit. That's pretty much it. You can copy or trace over the rest of it. Um, you can actually add the rest of the lines here using your O snaps and they'd snap correctly. Um, so that's about it. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. See you next time.